Margaret, we know that job search is a full-time job to find a job and there's a lot of challenges. Sometimes it can be a lot of, uh, you, we don't hear from the recruiters or we do interview and we, we're not selected, but how can job seekers stay positive during the job search? Is there any techniques that you give to your clients? Um, absolutely. And firstly, I, I completely appreciate how difficult um, and demotivating job search can be. Um, I can just maybe mention a couple of examples of when I was um, looking for a new recruitment contract. So firstly, during COVID pandemic, literally my contract ended when the pandemic started. Wow. There was nothing going on the yeah. job market for the first three months. There was literally yeah. nothing. It's not that I, I was applying, I wasn't getting no. Yes. There was nothing, there was nothing my, happening. There was absolutely nothing happening. And then when I started looking, even though you know I was only applying for jobs I, had, I was completely qualified for, yes. 700 applications. I could literally see that on LinkedIn. I'm like, yeah. I mean, you know, right. so of course I was doing all this stuff. I, I'm teaching, I'm teaching people as in try to connect with decision makers, try to get a referral. I was doing all of that stuff. But Got sometimes it. the job market is just not is just yeah. not great. And then I just to give you another example, in February, when I was looking for a new recruitment contract, I had so many interviews i was i had two offers within a month i yeah. probably would have got more but i got what i wanted so i had two offers within a month and i had up to five up to one day i think i had eight approaches from recruiters in a day and i think <laughs> I, I got, it was crazy so yeah. sometimes you know and, and i was doing the same things i wasn't actually doing anything different i was still being proactive but sometimes it's just the market so the market, yes. if you are in that situation and i completely understand how frustrating how mm. stressful how demoralizing it is and even just from that last um experience um i i've had some like good examples and bad examples because there were jobs that I've interviewed for and I have realized it's not the right fit, you know, so of course I would draw and sometimes they've also realized it's not the right fit, that, that's fine, that, that's normal yeah. part of a job process, but I also completely understand how horrible it is when you like, you, I mean, there's one company, to be honest, I actually was not interested because I found out it was a good company, but during the last interview, I found out things about the job that was never, that were never mentioned, mentioned. to me. Okay. And I'm like, no, I, so I knew it was not a no. Would you believe they never came back to me with any feedback whatsoever? Yeah. I asked for feedback out of yeah. like, curiosity, call out twice, nothing. And nothing. I'm like, how they ghosted that? you. They ghosted you. Yeah, literally. So I'm just saying like, it really happens to everyone, you know, don't take things like that personally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because these things will happen to it. It shouldn't happen. You know, as a recruiter, I give feedback to every candidate yeah. that has been interviewed. Um, but unfortunately, um, it, it, it happens. So when you're searching for a new job, focus on the things you can control because you can't control the fact someone doesn't come back to you. Yeah. You know, you can control the fact that you are very well prepared, that you are being proactive, that you're not just relying on job boards. Yes. Um, every job seeker should have a list of target companies that you um, you know, have a list of target companies, connect with recruiters there, connect with decision makers, and, and also like try to um, not like ruminate and stress, stress out over all of the pages, uh, uh, parts of the interviewing process mm -hmm. that are really far outside of your control. Because you can control your prep, you can control how proactive you are, everything else is completely outside your control. You can do an amazing interview yeah. and not get a job because the job will get put on hold or, they, or it yeah. will feel internally. So yeah, I've been there, focus. I've been there. I got five interviews one time and I said, oh, we're putting this on hold. I said, after five interviews, yeah, you cannot control, yeah. I know, you know, I actually had that recently as well. I had six interviews already. Wow. They kept me waiting for a week and they said, we need to have one one other interview. I'm like, fine. Do you think that it's a lot? Like five interviews, don't you think it's a lot? Like, um, I think it depends on, uh, depends on the job. I think five is kind of normal in many organizations, but seven, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, unless you're like a VP of something yeah. that I actually yeah. think it's uh, it's not yeah. needed. Um, and then they've asked for my references. They got great references and then they actually decided to hire someone else. I'm like, why ask you for my references? Why yeah. waste time? And usually so we know that when they ask for references, like, yeah. It's kind of done deal. They want you. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, I think they just, yeah, anyway. So, you know, not, not that that companies also, you reach out to recruiters or hiring managers, but we know that sometimes recruiters or hiring managers, they can be like very busy or they can say, please apply to the applicant's tracking system. So what can the job seeker put in that message when they're sending? What can be something unique? Like I've applied to the company, please re consider it what can they tell in the message do you mean if you when you're following up on your after your interview no no, no no let's say you applied for a job but you also get connected with the recruiter that's hiring manager yeah and, and i you know you said that hi mr x i applied for this role i'd like to hear from you is that something to no 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 I, I wouldn't just do that because the, this you're not adding any value whatsoever i will actually share you know i will share a couple of other articles i wrote on how to follow up on an application yeah. 
specific templates. But in that situation, you can, if you know that that was the hiring manager, I would just say something, you know, just to let you have a price for the position, that's fine. Yes. But then have like a, a sentence or a paragraph about what you can bring to the role. Because if mm -hmm. you're just saying, I hope to hear from you, like you're not really adding any value. So yes. I would just add a little bit about what you can bring, but not too long. I, I would yes. keep it short. Mm -hmm. um, I will share with you a couple of articles you can actually yes. um, share if you want, because I have some yes. templates I wrote. All know? right, that will be great. And again, thank you. Yeah. Just to finish, just to like finish on that on that topic, like it's yeah. it's it's completely natural to feel like fatigued and you know yeah. defeated when you look. What's wrong with me? Like, What's happening? Exactly. Like you think exactly. It's very common to lose confidence when things aren't going your way. You know, you just start doubting, you start second guessing yourself and all of your decisions. So when this happened, like recall, recall of your past accomplishments. You know, big or small. Think like you know why you're really special. It's all the like, exceptional skills and you know, experiences that you have to, to offer to prospective um, employers. Yeah. Um, and also like think positive thoughts, you know, like set aside all the negative thoughts racing around in your head and, and just replace them with positive affirmations. So yeah. instead of thinking, I will never find a job, yeah. tell yourself this is only a temporary setback or I won't let being in between jobs reduce my value. Yeah. Or, you know, I'm the same smart, successful person as before the job loss, or I will make it through a tough time period, you know? So, so just... Um, ju ju just things like that um, and also I think you know maybe like tune out anything that may get in your way like you know don't watch too much like television and you know just, I don't know, just look after Take yourself time off, go out exercise those are great tips exactly. exactly and one final thing I would say on this topic uh -huh. like if you are because I've seen it with so many clients if you are get if you're actually getting issues and you're not getting jobs Mm -hmm. get some help because i can't tell you how many sometimes it's just the market right sometimes you're not doing anything wrong you're actually a good interviewer but mm -hmm. if you had you know if you had more than three four unsuccessful interviews i would say there's something to do with your interview technique yes. I've, had people, I've had people who had five final interviews and no offer i've had people who had 40 unsuccessful interviews and that lady got a job something straight is wrong, yeah. Yeah. resume something is that so yeah so get some help from a professional if that's happens you know because but the thing is at the same time sometimes you could be a good interviewer interviewee and you know it, it just someone someone will have more relevant experience so sometimes it's that but if it happened more than several times i would say get some help because yeah. you, you you yeah of course of course there's something wrong with happening there and then we are here to help you in any way possible so again mario thank you for that great tips again for the audience watching also if you have any other tips please leave, leave them below and tune in next time for my final question with margaret